Hello friends, welcome you in today's live lectures. Today in our studio we have with us Dr. Shruti Vip. Dr. Vip is Assistant Professor in Department of History in PGDAV College. Dr. Vip has more than 15 years of teaching experience and with that she has keen interest in painting and she have got her uh, training from NIFA. Her area of interest are modern and abstract art and linking to that we have our today's lecture that is women and painting in modern India. Friends, we want to inform you that you can call us at our toll free number if you have any kind of queries regarding to this session and our toll free number is 1800 110 I'll repeat the number once again. It's 1-800-110-430. Let's welcome Dr. Webb. Dr. Webb, welcome. Hello. Uh, thanks a lot for giving me this wonderful opportunity to speak on this very interesting topic as has already been introduced to you. Today's topic is going to be women as depicted in paintings. So, as uh, we have already discussed the importance of visual art and any kind of medium to understand any kind of uh, serious subject like gender and women. So, therefore, in that context today, I would be talking about the visual medium of painting to speak at length about the changing historical interpretation as well as the current paradigms that exist. Uh, as we have already discussed in a series of lectures on women in history, there are different ways of understanding not only historical facts but also evaluating the changes that have come about. So, carrying forward the discussion, uh, I would begin with how uh, a layman can look at paintings and what all they can draw out, what all they can experience and to show that uh, very briefly I would be introducing to a couple of paintings that have been made by me. Uh, I am still uh, learning the process and uh, it is not to say that I am proficient in the art of painting, but as we are all students and we are all the time learning, it is an ongoing process. So, I would like to share with my uh, students, with the viewers, with the friends a uh, few paintings on the screen and then would also like to share what have been my experiences and feelings as I was making them. Now, the first painting that you can see on the screen is the paint it is a reproduction of a painting made by the great uh, painter Anjali Ila Menon. Uh, to me it appeared uh, when I looked at this painting that it is a beautiful woman who is surrounded by the beauty all around, but then there is an inner turmoil a strife which is kind of uh, depicted through the thorns which are there in the body which probably no outsider can see. But then uh, these uh, disturbed thoughts or these problems are there inside uh, embedded deep within. So, somewhere uh, women can relate to uh, this kind of a depiction and not only women I would like to say that all human beings we are facing some kind of turmoils which are not very visible to uh, uh, the outside world, but then they are very much there. So, this painting was an attempt to depict that. Then uh, the next slide uh, you can see it is the painting that is inspired by uh, Ajanta frescoes. Uh, trying to indicate uh, the role of Yakshi as has been uh, projected on the screen that how a woman imbibes in herself a certain uh, spiritual uh, godly qualities uh, as a creator 
and uh, it is not only beauty which is implicit in uh, the feminine body, but also the power of creation as uh, the lap uh, of uh, in this uh, painting you can if you minutely see in her lap there are various creatures like the serpent, uh, the Ganesha, uh, you know some uh, tribals and a number of other uh, animistic and non-animistic beings, thereby indicating that the entire prakriti uh, uh, is implicit in a woman. So, uh, this is again a different kind of a depiction. Now, in the next painting, this is uh, again uh, uh, a reproduction uh, of one of the paintings that I had seen in some of the art exhibitions that I keep visiting. Here the idea is to show uh, how uh, young girls are kind of peeping out of their uh, closed spaces and they are yearning for freedom. Uh, and they are looking stunned uh, the, the way they have their a blank blankness in their eyes as well as they are stunned to look at the world outside what lays in store for them they do not know and uh, they might be skeptical but then they are raring to go and in the second painting you can see uh, at the backdrop there uh, there are dooms indicating a uh, kind of medieval uh, uh, architecture so uh, here again it's a time space which shows that how uh, in the past women were uh, very comfortable in the closed spaces of homes, the domesticity and they were quite content uh, you know uh, playing music, uh, doing the household chores, uh, they were happy with the veena and uh, but still there were a few amongst them who were thinking of what lies ahead uh, in store for them. So, for example, the girl who is uh, sitting in the middle is not playing any music neither is she singing, but she is just thinking and looking outside and probably imagining the world that lays ahead. So, having discussed these paintings which are definitely not uh, you know, perfect in any way and uh, as I just to told you that I am still in the process of learning, but I just wanted to share with you as to how uh, a simple object, uh, a piece of art like a painting, you can uh, imbibe certain ideas uh, just looking at it and a lot depends on the viewer also. So, it is not only the artist uh, whose work is important, but also the way uh, uh, the viewers look at that work as they say beauty lies in the eyes of beholder. Now, coming back to our serious academic discussion uh, that is uh, paintings and how they depict women historically. Uh, here, I would like to introduce to you the topic. Uh, saying that women had always been a popular object uh, and subject of representation in various art forms. Uh, this was not only about painting, but also sculpture, uh, miniature paintings and uh, so on and so forth. And with the colonial interface, uh, with the uh, onset of uh, intermingling of the white man with the Asian culture, new forms of representing the women emerged, which were very much related to the socio-political arena of the time. So, therefore, uh, the usefulness of studying art is also, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a historical initiative and it is a historical exercise. It is not only uh, just for fun sake or entertainment that one can talk about uh, art forms, painting, music, sculpture, etcetera, because these are definitely sources of history as well. Because when we look at these paintings, we do come to know as to what was considered important by the colonial administrators. And and how they uh, held Indian society uh, in their uh dreams and uh, what exactly they thought Indian society was all about, because the themes that they picked up definitely mattered to them far more than those themes that they did not. So, uh, in this lecture, uh, we will study a few of the works of art made during this period that depict women 
in order to understand what kind of ideas uh, influenced the depiction of women in colonial India. Also, we will be studying some of the major ideas associated with the art styles of the period in order to understand the dynamics associated with the depiction of women. So, at the very onset, let me make it clear that the entire colonial period uh, that is uh, ranging from 1757 onwards when the East India Company was able to establish its hold over Bengal after Battle of Plassey and then after Battle of Buxar, there was no looking back. So, from then onwards to uh, probably post independence India and if possible also contemporary times. So, the entire span of almost more than 200 years would be included in this lecture and you would uh, be astonished to see as to how uh, the entire journey uh, of this 200 to 250 years uh, comes up very clearly on the canvas. So, therefore, uh, you must keep your uh, eyes open and also try to imbibe as much as you can from the various paintings that I would be sharing with you uh, in near future. Now, uh, the discussion would also revolve around a contribution of female painters to the modern Indian painting and we would also discuss as to how uh, the paintings that were made by female painters both during the colonial and post colonial period differed in themes and handling of the subject. Then uh, uh, we would also discuss how the Indian context completely emerges uh, during the late 19th and early 20th centuries through these paintings and this lecture is definitely an attempt to study the life and th thought provoking works of a uh, few of uh, uh, artists and particularly some women painters of modern Indian art. And in order to make this uh, lecture meaningful and interesting uh, and also focused, I have restricted myself to paintings uh, on women and their roles in the society. So, this is not to say that uh, it is a complete uh, portrayal of all kind of paintings that were being made by all genre of painters. So, my focus is definitely on women, the way women have been portrayed and the way women have painted during uh, the colonial and post colonial period and how far their paintings have been different from the male painters. So, uh, what has emerged out of uh, 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 this entire research is that nationalism uh, in art acted on multiple levels thereby attempting to bind together history regions, various art styles, at the same time also laying bare various obnoxious practices like sati and also trying to uh, evoke a feeling of patriotism against the colonial rule and thereby uh, uh, initially accepting Victorian, uh, 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 European Victorianism and then later on altogether rejecting Victorian, uh, European Victorianism all at the same time. So, therefore, uh, uh, the very fact that women were chosen as themes by uh, so many painters shows the usefulness of studying the subject that is women in Indian paintings. Now, uh, before we uh, zero down on some important painters and paintings, one must discuss what have been the past trends as to how the subject of painting was uh, uh, tackled in the beginning and uh, how traditionally Indian art representation was quite open vis-a-vis -vis women uh, who did not particularly cover their bodies uh, uh, well and uh, they were also depicted as wearing transparent clothing uh, which was quite admired and it, it was regarded as a mark of refined living and women had no inhibitions in interacting with men. So, these kind of paintings uh, you can 
see not only in various Ajanta frescoes uh, 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 from Gupta and post Gupta period onwards as well, but also uh, during the Mughal miniature uh, paintings, this kind of a depiction was carried on and women were uh, portrayed in transparent clothes, thereby celebrating their beauty and the, the whole idea of femininity was kind of celebrated in art. Another example that you can give is that of ancient sculptures, uh, the way f uh, female figure was portrayed and uh, a lot of emphasis was put on showing properly the curves and uh, 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 there was no inhibition on showing a curvaceous voluptuous female body uh, and similar examples can be traced in a number of uh, a temple architecture for example Khajuraho temple uh, which is replete with such examples. So the question arises that when there was so much emphasis on freedom of expression and on showing beauty in all its varied forms, what happened during uh, uh, the so called modern period uh, particularly during the colonial period that this entire tendency of showing the beauty of female figure uh, completely changed itself. Now, uh, there was a continuous representation of that kind of a liberated art form uh, which was full of sexual energy and vigor from the beginning of the Indian history till the 18th century uh, in various Indian art forms. Even sexual scenes were uh, depicted explicitly without any inhibition. However, 19th century was the time when Victorian Europeans and Christian missionaries both started criticizing the liberality of women. They started criticizing the way women were being depicted in various art forms and therefore uh, there appeared a public sphere, a public space where women had to be relegated to and the entire celebration of beauty and sexuality came to an end and there was some kind of an apologetic reaction to Victorian criticism. Thereby, even Indian artists uh, during uh, late 18th and early 19th centuries changed their styles. They started adopting Victorian techniques and there was definitely a change in their behavior to cater to the modest and docile notions of Victorian Europeans and Christian missionaries. So, uh, all the students of art must understand this paradigm shift which happened during the colonial period and the real reason behind this change was not Indian value system or Indian tradition or belief in simplicity or parda, rather it was uh, a kind of uh, uh, you know uh, imposition by Victorian mindset uh, and they did not want Indian women to be painted in uh, a shameless so called shameless way as they were being painted so far. Therefore, when uh, we start our discussion on next uh, important theme that is company paintings, that is all those paintings that were uh, patronized, that were made during the rule of East India Company, uh, they belonged to this kind of a restrictive genre. Uh, in the early days of the British rule in India, the British travellers, merchants and the ruling officials who came here uh, commissioned paintings for the British markets. So, painting was always a very important and uh, a very popular uh, kind of an activity in the British markets and the Britishers, they took keen interest in gathering as much as information uh, and uh, 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 you know uh, the collection uh, m making the coll collection diverse as they could. So, uh, this was not only being done by professional painters, but there were uh, there was a process of commissioning art which was undertaken not only by the administrators, but also by the traders etc. So, the British commissioning agents for painting, uh, they were very specific about guiding their artists about the kind of themes and scenes they wanted 
to be depicted and therefore, they also dictated the kind of artistic styles that they would value and which they would like to carry back home. Uh, because they were very bothered about the likes and dislikes of the British clients back home which were uh, uh, quite influenced by the ideals of Victorianism at that time and hence started the phase of company painting. Now, uh, coming to the issue of subjects in the painting, what kind of subjects were uh, 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 patronized in the paintings, they were varied, uh, it was not uh, one or two subject that was uh, selected, they were varied and depicted the day to day lives of common people, uh, also the life of the nobility, the street, street scenes, river banks, women bathing in on the ghats, people going to the temples and also market places, the scenes of cities and villages etcetera apart from natural landscapes and the women in these paintings represented the dancing girls, the courtesans and the women seen on the streets. So, therefore, uh, whenever there was an attempt to uh, paint a woman, it was not uh, uh, it was not as if a normal uh, normal woman belonging to a household would be painted in a normal kind of a scene. So, the woman had to be either a, court, uh, a courtesan or uh, it was a dancer who would be entertaining uh, uh, the guests particularly uh, the, the British uh, sahibs and also women loitering on the streets huddled in the bazaar or on the ghats. These were some of the favorite themes that were picked up as far as women were concerned. The British in India specifically adopted a lifestyle uh, similar to that of the Indian nobles ways of life. So, the lives, the ways of uh, lives of Indian aristocracy were now being aped by colonial administrators and officers. So, therefore, they also started having multiple wives wearing Indian aristocratic dresses and also they were attended by a retinue of domestic servants including both men and women and many of the colonial paintings depict this kind of a retinue of uh, uh, servants which definitely uh, created the idea of power. The company paintings recorded various activities and showed the women in these paintings in various roles. Uh, most of the colonial paintings represented an India that was both exotic and also uh, full of women who prominently took the place of dancers, singers and entertainers and also active participants in public life. So, the, the entire notion of women being entertainers and always at the, be and at the beck and call of the white man was definitely a very important theme that emerged in these paintings. Now, uh, as you can see on uh, this slide, uh, the slide is that of the painting of a dancing girl. Now, in this uh, uh, painting, you can see that uh, the entire focus is on how women are performing along with men in order to entertain the audience. So, nothing else can be seen uh, in the painting, but the focus is on uh, the female who is in the act of entertaining uh, the audience. Then in another uh, painting that follows now, that is uh, the painting where you can see the notch girls who are sitting, the uh, they are singing in order to please the audience. Then again, the, a group of courtesans in this painting, you can see uh, the, the entire focus is on how there are so many courtesans huddled in a room and they are uh, engaging a uh, uh, probably engaging in some kind of a conversation or they are uh, 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 indulging in some kind of a serious discussion because here they are not shown as uh, performing and hookah was definitely a very important part of the scene in order to capture uh, the colonial legacy. 
then uh, in this painting again women at the market you can see that again it's a very artificial kind of a portrayal of a marketplace as if it is uh, only women who throng a market there are no men to be seen and the place uh, looks as if uh, it is only full of women and full of commodities so the entire focus on commodification that emerges from this painting uh, looks quite uh, contemporary then uh, carrying on with our discussion about the kind of paintings that have been just shown to you so how do you describe these paintings they can be described as european styles uh, and the european influences in the uh, partial three dimensionality of figures uh, as well as elimination of minute details from backgrounds and decorative elements and also a liberal use of monochromes in the background all these were very important features of european painting during uh, the early uh, 19th century so therefore uh, there was definitely a shift uh, in the entire uh, process and technique of painting where instead of uh, use of multiple colors now there was an emphasis on using monochromes and also elimination of minute detail so so that the focus was on what the colonial administrators wanted to show and there was no confusion that was shown in the background the complexity gave way to the depiction of clear images of women there was also a tendency to show the women using their thick cloth for dresses rather than the transparent uh, costumes in which they were shown during the miniature paintings of the medieval uh, and uh, early modern period so therefore uh, uh, while the dresses of the mughal miniatures were copied in many paintings but now the there was no transparency in that that was shown the the the, uh, the cloth was thick in conformity to the victorian mindset which did not uh, uh, regard showing a woman's body as a matter of virtue so thereby uh, uh, the trend had already been uh, set by uh, 19th century uh, and by the beginning of 20th century now in the next section uh, of the lecture i would be discussing with you how uh, all these principles uh, of victorian uh, painting techniques were imbibed by some of the indian artists starting from raja ravi verma thank you
Welcome back friends. Uh, as I told you, we would be beginning the discussion with uh, the famous painter Raja Ravi Verma. Raja Ravi, Ravi Verma whose time span extends from 1848 to 1906 was a remarkable self-taught uh, Indian painter from the princely state of Travancore and his exposure to the West came when he won the first prize in the Vienna Art Exhibition in 1873. Verma's paintings were also sent to the World's Columbian Exposition held in Chicago in 1893 and his work was well appreciated where he got gold medals also. He is considered the first of the modernists. Uh, along with Amrita Shergill, uh, whose time span was 1913 to 1941. And these are two are considered as the main exponents of Western techniques to develop a new portrayal in the subjective interpretation of Indian culture. Another commonality between the two was that they both uh, used the theme of women in depicting uh, various ideas through their paintings. The work of Raja Ravi Verma was considered to be among the best examples of the fusion of Indian traditions with the techniques of European art traditions in the colonial nationalistic framework of the 19th century. So thereby you can see three kind of tendencies that were uh, at play. One was of course the Victorian uh, art forms that were uh, creating an influence. Then secondly, there was an indigenous art form that was evolving. Uh, and thirdly, there was the influence of nationalist ideas that were also uh, becoming stronger day by day. And these three different uh, uh, divergent trends kind of uh, synthesized themselves. And this was the work of modern Indian artists like Raja Ravi Verma. Uh, uh, Raja Ravi Verma is most remembered for his paintings of beautiful sari clad women who were portrayed as very shapely and graceful uh, and of course very beautiful. Verma became the best known allegorist of Indian subjects in his depiction of scenes from the epics of Mahabharat and Ramayana. And uh, he, uh, since he belonged to the royal family of Travenko, uh, who learnt lithography and oil painting uh, in Germany. So, he had all the kind of resources at his disposal to go abroad and learn the best techniques of paintings. He was also influenced by the western aesthetic ideals of paintings, which were quite uh, reminiscent in his art. This was also the time when traditional Indian art forms were facing lot of criticism uh, uh, from the Europeans because they did not correspond to the so called Victorian notions of morality and chastity about which we have already discussed in the last lecture. So, the notion of traditional in India in terms of women staying indoors, women being properly covered and covering them themselves up when they are appearing in public and acting in a decile and 
pre-decided manner, particularly in front of men, is the remnant of the Victorian influence over the Indian society in the 19th century. And it is not to be confused with Indian culture, with Indian traditions or with India's past. Because India's past definitely gave lot of freedom. Uh, to move about and as was shown in various art forms also. Uh, now coming to the idea of cultural synthesis, uh, which was clearly depicted in uh, Ravi Varma's paintings, uh, it was al also influenced by this cultural debate that was going on in the art sphere and he tried to synthesize his training in western aesthetic art forms with the traditional Indian themes. So, this was the beauty of his art that while he was uh, experimenting with the western technique that he had learnt abroad, his themes essentially remained Indian and rooted to the past. The result was a series of paintings that attempted to answer to the European critique by covering the women in thick clothing using three dimensionality and shading of figures and showing the women as docile and modest in response to the Victorian expectations. His art gave rise to a popular calendar printed art form which survives even today. So, the women now donned uh, a more uh, a submissive and a more shy kind of an image and they were uh, properly covered and uh, the folds of the saris or the dress that they were shown uh, wearing also did not really highlight the uh, sexual energy of the body, rather it was more uh, an attempt to drape it properly. Uh, here you can uh, on the slide you can see the painting of a Malayali woman in dressing room and the, uh, the kind of sari that she is wearing is was typically uh, worn in that part of the country at that time. So, therefore, it was very important to paint according to the cultural demands of the time and space. So, there uh, this was again a very practical approach that was adopted by Ravi Varma. Then again in this painting in the lady playing Veena, uh, it is a different kind of a portrayal where lot of serenity can be seen on the face and uh, though she is wearing an off shoulder kind of uh, sari, but there is also some attempt to cover up. Though this was not the kind of uh, dress that was worn, uh, women uh, generally wore uh, the earlier kind of painting which showed an off shoulder uh, kind of a sari. Then uh, in the next uh, slide you can see a very typical and a traditional uh, kind of a portrayal of Shakuntala um, uh, who is stung by a thorn in her feet and this again became a, a one of the very famous and important paintings of Ravi Varma. So, you can see that in most of these paintings the emphasis has been on traditional portrayal. Uh, the above paintings depict uh, these women in thick dress materials and their expressions of modesty, uh, their expressions of simplicity, modesty and also grace and docility are quite evident. Uh, and he also attempts to conform to the Victorian notions, uh, but at the same time his Indian conditioning uh, also has an influence on the paintings and therefore, at times he is also showing women in more revealing fashion with bare shoulders, which was in line with the Indian tradition. So, uh, having discussed uh, Ra Ra Raja Ravi Varma's artwork, now the next major uh, change and transformation that came about was the Bengal school of painting. Uh, this was definitely in response to the Victorian critique of the Europeans and Raja Ra Ravi Varma's experiments uh, that a group of artists arose in Bengal under the leadership of the Tagore family at Shantiniketan. Now, these painters uh, rejected uh, the European Victorian technique, but 
still they infused some Indian traditions with the shading techniques of Europe and also they uh, adopted the painting techniques of some other countries like Japan. So, therefore, now an attempt was made to uh, shy away from only following the European pattern. So, they created an art style that was traditional, modern, nationalistic as well as pan-Asian because they were adopting Japanese techniques of paintings as would be shown in a series of slides that I am going to share with you. Now, the paintings in these uh, 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 Bengal artists paintings uh, symbolized Indian life as well as mythological roles uh, in a variety of traditional modernistic forms. So, therefore, now an attempt was made to not only adhere to the criticism of Victorianism, but to emphasize on indigenous art forms and to look beyond Europe to look beyond uh, countries like France and Italy and Germany and to adopt practices that were Asian techniques that were popular uh, in Japan at that time, which at that time was emerging as a very important place where many new techniques were being uh, worked at. Uh, as you can see uh, in this painting that was made uh, by the Bengal artists, a passing of Shah Jahan, this was painted by Abhinindranath Tagore. Uh, then in another painting, Ashoka's Queen, uh, this was made by Nandalal Bose, uh, another very famous uh, artist of the Bengal school of art. And uh, in these paintings, the emphasis was definitely on showing women in their various moods, in their pensive mood or waiting for uh, their lover. And they were uh, definitely these paintings, they showed the influence of Shanti Niketan and the kind of uh, technique that was evolving in Shanti Niketan and which was quite different from uh, the kind of technique that was uh, uh, adopted by Raja Ravi Verma uh, initially. So, Abhinindranath Tagore and Nandalal Bose, they set the tone for the artistic nationalism rejecting the European cr critique as well as Raja Ravi Verma's to corresponding to respond to that technique. So, this was uh, therefore a third kind of an experimentation in the history of Indian art. Uh, they drew figures from Indian history such as Shah Jahan and Ashoka's wife, but the uh, emphasis was on showing the female figure. In the painting showing the passing of Shah Jahan, uh, it is his daughter who is in the foreground and uh, she is feeling sad uh, uh, and uh, as you can again see in that painting, uh, the backdrop you can see Taj Mahal and this represents the bygone era, uh, a period that has come to an end and how the daughter is mourning. She is looking at her father but it also shows that she is mourning the passing of an era and the beginning of a new age which has brought about gloom. Then uh, uh, this is also, uh, it is also important in the sense that it shows how the female is representing Indian nation. It is the daughter of Shah Jahan who symbolizes Indian nation and she is mourning uh, what all is going on during the colonial period and the way things are progressing is definitely not to the liking of anybody and this is clearly being represented by her sad and bewildered face. Then uh, uh, in, in this another painting uh, on Geet Govinda, this was by Kshitinath Mazumdar. Now, Mazumdar uh, in this painting has picked up a scene from Geet Govinda and shown a very different kind of a portrayal of uh, uh, Radha and Krishna. Here, Krishna is not donning, as you can see, uh, 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 the Mayur Pank, which is the very distinct mark of Krishna. And uh, uh, it is not a, a, a very happy go uh, lucky kind of a dalliance, which is usually portrayed the dalliance between Radha and Krishna. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, a different kind of feeling 
uh, is evoked as one looks at the painting. And in another uh, different kind of a painting is that the famous uh, painting of Bharat Mata by Abhinindranath Tagore. As you can see, uh, the, the, it is the body of woman, the standing image of a woman who symbolizes the nation. So, thereby these paintings, the kind of feelings that they uh, tried to instill in the audience was nationalism and it was through the body of women, it was through the mood of women that the feeling of nationalism was to be inculcated. So, Bharat Mata was clearly a depiction of patriotism that was personified and it penetrates the mother India herself. At least this was the intention of Abhinindranath Tagore and his best known painting which is Bharat Mata depicted a young woman portrayed with four arms in the manner of Hindu deities holding objects that were symbolic of India's national aspirations. Now another painting of this jena that is the, uh, the title of the painting is Sati uh, by Nandilal Bose. Again, a very different kind of a portrayal where a woman is not sh shown as jumping or as uh, uh, being followed by a crowd or a mob or as being venerated. But she is shown as a, a lone uh, image who is in a dream kind of a state. And another a different painting which had uh, influence of uh, uh, Egyptian style of painting was that of Radha's Virha by Nandilal Bose, uh, which again was uh, a very different kind of headgear that Radha is donning. As you can see her lying on the ground, the kind of headgear that is generally donned by the Egyptian kings, the queens. Now, the feminist focus of these artists is uh, uh, though partly vil visible, but it does not portray the complete truth about women in India. But definitely these paintings show uh, changing society and the works display confidence and strength in the Indian women while representing graceful figures of women. The paintings not only depict the romantic image of female figures, but also their roles and importance in the society that was clearly being uh, uh, now advocated and also accepted uh, by the first half of 20th century. And these paintings also bought the uh, uh, plight of women in spotlight and forced people to reflect on the lives of Indian women and also their standing in the society. And this was particularly, particularly true of those paintings which uh, for example, the painting of Sati, there the woman is shown as uh, you know alone, as in a dreamlike state, as silently fi uh, fighting a, a lonely battle. And many famous uh, female painters uh, who have contributed to modern Indian uh, paintings of India uh, also need to be discussed in this background. And pioneers in the development of newer styles, choices of themes, mediums, etc., they not only impacted the social structures existing during their era by challenging them, but also they became uh, a source of inspiration for other artists. Now, this is particularly important in the context of 19th uh, and uh, late 19th and early 20th centuries as women were largely oppressed and discriminated against and it was very important that some women do uh, establish their agency by um, uh, through various means, uh, it could be through education, it could be through uh, acting, it could be through painting. So, uh, a few pioneering women artists of modern India used their canvases effectively to portray the social standing of women, their struggles, frustrations, confusions, dreams, etc. And these uh, are definitely going to be a part of our discussion uh, in near future. Now, one such example that can be talked about is that of the paintings made by Sunaini Devi. Uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, the painting where she is holding a parrot and then uh, where uh, 
the three girls are there uh, just in a rural kind of a life. They are walking, talking or just spending some time together. Then another painting uh, uh, made by a very important uh, artist of the Bengal school, Jamini Roy. Uh, the, the, it, the title of the painting is Bride. Now, as I was shown in one of the earlier paintings of Ashoka's wife, uh, in that painting Ashoka's wife is shown in a romantic splendor, which was very different from uh, Raja Ravi Verma's style of painting, where the emphasis was not on grace or on demeanor or on obedience, but it was an upright face where she had all the right to show her expressions and to wait for her king. Then uh, Nandalal Bose also painted on the current problems as I just shared with you the painting on Sati and the Sati is shown in a dreamlike state. So most of these paintings show the victimhood of women which was definitely a reality during the na late 19th and early 20th century, an idea that was clearly uh, picked up by most of the artists of the Bengal school. So therefore, they were definitely a step ahead. They were not only focusing on beauty or on perfection or on femininity, but they were also picking up issues that needed attention. Uh, then uh, Kshitindranath uh, Mazumdar in his paintings on Geet Govinda, uh, which also I had shared with you. Uh, in this, Radha's Virha is again uh, not depicted in a traditional way. And Jamini Roy's uh, bride also tried to integrate the folk styles of the Bengal painting tradition. So again, this was uh, a departure from uh, uh, the per uh, earlier styles in which the, uh, a very uh, European kind of shading technique that, uh, that was being adopted uh, by a number of Bengal artists also. But this was done away with Jamini Roy in uh, his painting of Bright. Now, coming to the a very important uh, woman painter of the Bengal school that is Sunaini Devi. Uh, uh, Sunaini Devi is a lesser known woman artist from the Tagore family, uh, being a niece of Rabindranath Tagore and married the grandson of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. So definitely belonged to an illustrious family, but she was not as lucky as her brothers in getting formal education and uh, but still this did not stop her from painting and she began painting at the age of 30 years uh, as a result of encouragement uh, by her husband and uh, the paintings that were made by Sunaini Devi were different in the sense that there was no emphasis on ritual. So there was uh, a, an emphasis on the day to day life uh, on the prevailing circumstances of women without the ritual context which was definitely a change uh, and a new kind of experimentation for those times. And uh, as has been uh, already discussed, most of these paintings uh, of the Bengal artists, they uh, reflected a journey towards modernity because they were re rejecting the past experiments, they were rejecting Victorian criticism and they were coming on their own. So therefore, paintings by painters like Ram Kinkar Baj and Hemendranath Mazumdar, they showed women in much more bolder way and they also broke away from the tradition and the stereotype. And uh, 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 another very important example in this genre can be uh, uh, given of Amrita Shergil, uh, who lived in Europe and imbibed the painting techniques of uh, France and Italy as well as Germany. But uh, despite being a professionally trained woman artist uh, and taking up art as a profession, she was rooted to Indian themes and depicting women in the Indian uh, uh, ways of life and uh, also uh, picking up themes and uh, problems that were prevalent in those times. 
and this was displayed through a variety of emotions that were depicted on the canvas. So, the entire uh, idea that was uh, emerging was that of a woman's agency. Now, as I just shared with you, uh, this woman's agency had already started making its mark in the field of education, also in the field of various uh, um, uh, reform movements, in the field of uh, uh, movements related to nationalism, the struggle for uh, uh, winning over freedom and also the Gandhian technique of mass mobilization. So, here there was a different kind of a different level of women's agency that was emerging that was in the field of art. The fact that women were chosen as the agency to depict all this all the change is very important and uh, uh, Sunaini Devi is important in that context because as a woman painter she was painting about women. Her art was a representation of women in her times and also it had influence of modern, modernity as well as modernist uh, forms. While there were many women folk artists who painted for ritual purpose, a woman artist who painted only for the sake of painting uh, without the ritual context was a real achievement of Sunaini Devi in those times. Now, as you can see in this painting, uh, After the Bath by Hemendranath Mazumdar, this again was a rejection of Victorian idealism of not showing women in wet clothes. So, the idea was to show women as they were and as they were in different times of the day and donning different moods. So, therefore, there was no inhibition on showing the reality. So, this again referred to reversal of tradition to modernity and then back to tradition. Under Victorian influence, it was seen that artists began to cover up the women in thick clothing, which was again a sign of modernity in the colonial period. And Hemindranath not only rejected Victorian uh, um, modesty by showing the woman's body again through transparent wet clothes, but he also did that in a, uh, in a very subtle uh, and a very graceful manner. And that was the whole beauty of this change that was coming about. Now, again, uh, uh, a very important painting by Ram Kinkar Baj. Uh, the title of the painting is Binodini, as you can see uh, uh, on the slide. Uh, this was uh, a, a painting of a, a woman who was not a very traditional kind of a householder, but one who had developed different kind of relations with men and the, the very fact that such a kind of uh, woman was also being now uh, talked about, she had, she carried that weight and importance was given to her that she was being painted and the painting became very popular, uh, speaks volumes about the change that was coming about. So, therefore, uh, from Victorian to modern times. Uh, this transformation is a very interesting one and uh, today's ideas of conservative Indian traditions have definitely been borrowed from the western notions of morality and the Victorian European ideals and they were not rooted in the Indian tradition. Uh, this again uh, was reflected in a series of paintings that were made by uh, famous painters like Amrita Sh uh, Shergil and Ram Kinkar Bej. They freed the woman's body from the predisposed lines, forms, uh, uh, expressions and attempted a truly liberated and a most modern kind of an art style that was contemporary in West in those days. So, therefore, the way women were being depicted uh, independently of lines and forms and expressions in the West, the same technique was employed by these artists in uh, Indian soil, on Indian soil also. They portrayed the varied uh, moods, emotions, conditions of women in, uh, from various walks of life. Uh, it could be a widow, uh, then it could also be a theatre actress called Binodini. 
it could be portrait of a woman uh, who was not conforming to the traditional uh, kind of a uh, householder or a housewife or a mother but she could be an independent minded woman who was uh, not really following the set rules and regulations of the society uh, so it could be a prostitute turned actress like binodini and uh, she was also regarded as fit for portrayal on the canvas so uh, now with these different themes in mind uh, i would like to uh, leave the audience thinking about how the art form helps us in knowing about the changes that come about over a period of uh, you know 202 to 50 years and in the next lecture we would be continuing from here thank you thank you dr web uh friends you might have get entitled more about women and paintings in modern india if you have any queries or suggestion about this lecture you can write in to us at our email and our email is info.cc@nic.in thank you for watching today's live lecture